remember standing in front of my dad, my father, Godfrey, and realizing that the diagnosis he was given was wrong. On August the 3rd, 2003, I relocated back to Nigeria from the United States, where I, I had just finished my healthcare management program and found myself working for the large health maintenance organizations in the United States. I had lived and worked there for over a decade, understanding how the healthcare system works, understanding through my work with the health maintenance organizations, the interactions between health insurers, hospital, even the patients, and how they are able to access care through a very efficient healthcare system. And I thought to myself, why shouldn't I take the knowledge that I've acquired over the years and take it back home and help develop the healthcare system in Nigeria. So I set out to go home. When I got home uh, to Nigeria, my first port of call was to visit my parents, to see my dad. And looking at him, standing in front of him, I realized that something wasn't quite right. He was coughing excessively. His feet were swollen. He didn't look well, and I realized that something was off, and it was more serious than the diagnosis he had been given, which he was being treated for cough. I mobilized. I spoke to my siblings, most of who were already working in the United States in the healthcare system, and we thought that the best thing to do was to avail him of a better healthcare system better than the one that had already misdiagnosed him. So we decided to evacuate him and set for treatment in the United States. Upon arrival in Atlanta, Georgia, he went through a series of tests. And unfortunately, he was diagnosed with total kidney failure and needed dialysis three times a week. What that then meant was that he couldn't go back home because we thought this was supposed to be a really quick visit, so they had literally just picked a few personal items when they were leaving for the United States. So they, my father stayed in the United States. He was receiving good quality care for almost nine years, after which he died. I was sorry to say that my mom, my mother, who was the primary caregiver, died a year before him. So it was quite unfortunate, more so because they died away from friends and family. In my culture, Igbo, everybody knows that Igbo men want to retire in their hometown, in their village. They want to be near friends and family. They want to be buried there. My father didn't have that chance because he was living and receiving treatment in the United States. Now, that got me thinking, why is it that to receive good quality health care, you have to leave the country? It's quite unfortunate that 40% of the diagnosis in Nigeria is actually wrong. So you can imagine, four out of every 10 patients that walks into a healthcare facility is misdiagnosed. In some diseases, it's even worse, like cancer. Cancer is seven out of 10 patients misdiagnosed, and it's totally unacceptable. And I wondered to myself, how can I help find a solution to correct the healthcare system so that every Nigerian is able to have a decent quality healthcare service from their local doctors? Unfortunately for me, I work for a, an international NGO called Farm Access Foundation. And Farm Access Foundation has been working in Nigeria for over 12 years, working along the pillars of supporting state governments to make healthcare accessible to the average Nigerian, especially for those at the bottom of the pyramid. We support state governments, we, we collaborate with private sector to inject funding and investments into the healthcare system. We try to ensure that people who 
want to access healthcare service don't have to face financial ruin when they go into the hospital. But at the same time, the quality of healthcare service that they receive on the supply side to the hospitals is up to par. And we have been developing all sorts of frameworks and developing proof of concepts, which we look for partners to implement. So we developed this framework where we understood from statistics that over 24,000 primary healthcare centers built by the state governments are either non-functional or abandoned. Of the 24,000 built, about 20% of them are actually abandoned and non-functional. So we approached Delta State. Delta State is one of the forward-thinking states in the south of Nigeria. They had already started implementing a mandatory health insurance scheme. In fact, they had enrolled over 500,000 people onto the health insurance scheme. But that then posed the issue of access points. Where do the people who have enrolled access healthcare services? And we said to them, give us some of these abandoned healthcare facilities. Let us collaborate with private sector to find a way to revitalize the centers and have people enroll and use those primary healthcare centers. And we got to work. And what we observed after 12 months of implementation was nothing short of remarkable. In a city where you had over 50,000 people with no access to primary health care centers, now they were able to walk in without fear of being rejected, without fear of financial ruin, access quality health care services. We were now seeing a situation where Utilization within the healthcare facilities went from zero to almost 400 patients in a month. We were seeing babies being born, increase in antenatal visits, you know, and all of a sudden, the patients and the citizens were empowered. They had some, they started developing faith in the system that they could actually walk into a healthcare facility and receive care without fear. We started seeing a drop in maternal mortality and child mortality. Nigeria, by the way, is one of the countries with the highest burden of maternal mortality and child mortality in the world. And you have to ask yourself, where were these women going to, to deliver before these primary health centers were activated? So in a country like Nigeria with over 200 million people, and of these 200 million people, over 70% of the populace live on less than $2 a day. Over 70% of the care provided in Nigeria is provided by the private sector. So you have to find a way, we had to think about all this dynamic and find a way to bring in the private sector to support the government because we know that government cannot provide healthcare services all by themselves. I know that healthcare is a fundamental human right. It is a right to life, if you put it plainly. So the question then is, how do we scale this up across the country? So in a sense, what we have done, and if you can look at the images of the primary healthcare centers, you can see the picture of the clinic with grass and weeds growing all over it and goats running around. And you can see the transformation after it was upgraded. All this was just to show evidence that it is possible. And in all of this, government did not have to put down any money to refurbish the primary health care centers. And this is the kind of model that we are trying to promote and to scale up around the world because we know that it, it is possible. So how do we make public-private partnership, the model? How do we bring in private sector to help support the government to make healthcare accessible? We know that government alone cannot do it. We know that 70% of the indigents live on less than $2 a day. And this is the story of every Nigerian. How do we then allow for those who have the funding that would have normally gone overseas it, uh, to get treatment, how do we reverse that tourism and keep the, the dollars within Nigeria to develop our system? 
That is what the, the, the solution we're trying to find. That is the collaborative effort that we're trying to push. So I'm beginning to imagine a healthcare system where there is an enabling environment for public-private partnership to work, an environment where you know, you can almost call it a franchising model, such as adopted in the fast food industry, where primary healthcare centers run by private organizations have processes, protocols, equipment, trained staff, have adopted technology as the backbone of their operation in order to make healthcare more efficient in Nigeria. And if I take the case of my father and think about the millions of Nigerians, Nigeria, for those who don't know, is a country of over 200 million people. And I often joke that I wasn't counted, nor were my children. So we're probably far more than that. And that the average Nigerian has the same story of not being able to access healthcare services without financial ruin. So now I'll reimagine my father in 2003. I reimagine that when he was coughing, he went to his local doctor who had the right equipment and the right staff and the right knowledge and the right processes, and they were able to immediately diagnose that he had a kidney failure and put him on, on, on dialysis treatment. He could go for his sessions from his house with his wife and return home after the sessions, still in the comfort of his friends and family and in a family environment in his home. And we, the children, from wherever we are, can monitor his progress with authorized access to his electronic medical records. That is the system that I reimagine. That is the system that I'm hoping will be the norm, that will become the norm, so that access to healthcare services is not for the rich, but rather a benefit and a fundamental human right to every Nigerian. So these are just my thoughts on how I reimagine healthcare and how we can make it accessible to the average Nigerian. Thank you.